Hello, I'm Pastor Joey Rogers, and welcome to Prophecy Files. We're glad that you've joined us today. We're certainly living in a time of prophetic significance happening on a daily basis, and of course, still with the stay home order that has been issued all around our country for the safety of uh, everyone concerned, there is uprisings that are taking place. And certainly when there is lawlessness and conditions like we have it right now, people being confined, uh, you can look for that next step if things are not under control of civil unrest. Well, we want to deal with that just a little bit on today's Prophecy Files and what that leads to into the future. I want you to stay tuned. The close of this broadcast today, I'm going to share with you a clip that I believe is a prophetic word for us from a Prophecy File update from last year whenever I was preaching and bringing to the congregation some of the signs of the times and concluding the message of how important that word will be to us today. So stay tuned for that. I believe it will be insightful and help you and encourage you to live in these last days prior to the coming of the Lord. But first, let me take you to some of these articles that are pointing us toward uh, the very events that I'm speaking about. One deals with money losing its meaning. From this particular article in Bloomberg, he says, doing whatever it takes to save the global economy from the corona pandemic is going to cost a lot of money. The United States government alone is spending a few trillion dollars, and the Federal Reserve is creating another few trillion dollars to keep the financial system from collapsing. A Bloomberg index measured the M2 figures for the 12 major economies, uh, including China, the Eurozone, Japan, so forth, have already doubled to $80 trillion. Uh, that's from the 2008-2009 crisis. It goes on. These numbers are so large that they no longer have any meaning. They are simply abstractions. It's been some time since people uh, thought about the concept of money and its purpose. I can tell you one of the signs of the last days, according to the scripture, as we shared with you on last week's Prophecy File program, of the economy and the rippling effect that takes place from what is happening right now. Uh, someone was asked a few days ago that is in a position with the IRS, how is this money coming about? And uh, in a comic kind of relief moment, they said, well, they're, they've got printing presses and they're just printing the money. Well, it's very true. That's exactly what's taking place. And the value of that is going down by the day. It is bringing us to the edge of economic collapse. Prophets of old have prophesied that these things would take place prior to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's another article that you need to be aware of. Stay-at-home orders cause protest nationwide. You're seeing now civil unrest taking place. People that are saying, we've been confined long enough, it's time for you to turn, uh, turn us loose back into the workforce and so forth. And certainly I believe that there is every desire for that to take place. However, we're now at a place, according to this article, where 16.8 million Americans have filed for unemployment. And that joblessness is a condition that could certainly boil over in the time that we're living in right now. These things are certainly true uh, concerning Bible prophecy and civil unrest, or what the Bible calls lawlessness in the last days. But here is the article that struck me that I believe is a tell sign, and this is what I want to deal with today. From the New York governor, Andrew Cuomo, who stated, quote, God did not stop the spread of this virus. The article says from his quote in an um, interview that he was having with CNN, we're talking about a reopening, he says, that has a public health plan and an economic plan totally coordinated. Our behavior, he says, has stopped the spread of the virus. God did not stop the spread of the virus. And what we do, how we act, will dictate how the virus spreads. Well, I truly believe that uh, human beings are part of the answer by the biblical uh, direction of separating and isolating when there is a pandemic, a virus, a plague. There's nothing wrong with that, and that's cooperative, and that is what needs to take place. But to say in the face of God, God had nothing to do with it. God uh, did not stop the spread of this virus, as he stated. I want you to understand that that's in the face of God, and that's what concerns me. 
uh, in this time that we're living in right now because uh, even Christian people are on the brink of their faith. And some are throwing their hands up saying, uh, where is God in, in the middle of this? We prayed and there's no answer. Well, just because that God doesn't answer like the second window at our fast food restaurant doesn't mean that God is not in charge. And I want to share with you this passage of Scripture from 2 Thessalonians because I believe there's two things that are going to take place. Either hearts are going to be hardened toward God or they're going to be humbled. Now, that statement from the governor of New York is not one of humility. It's one that says, we did it all. And that is certainly prophetic in the word of God. Romans chapter 1 says that man begins to heap the praise upon himself and doesn't even take God into consideration. So from the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2 verse 1, he says this, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. That term, gathering together, deals with the rapture of the church. And this is what he says in verse 2, not to be soon shaken in your mind, nor troubled neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as if it was coming from us, as to the day of the Lord or the day of Christ. So he says, I don't want you to be on shaky ground. I don't want you to be shaken like a ship that is on the sea that's agitated. I don't want you to be shaken in your mind. Don't lose the peace of God. Uh, don't be a, in a place where your steadfastness uh, is being undermined by a word of prophecy that somebody has or some uh, letter of authority that's coming your way telling you all about the bad things or uh, even about good things, some prophecy of peace that is supposed to take place. Hear me. This scripture here is speaking to us about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what was happening during the time of the Thessalonians when Paul writes this is that many of them were just casting off restraint and becoming lazy and mooching off of other Christians, not even working, not even trying to be able to extend the kingdom of God. They were just sitting around because they had gotten false uh, prophets and false preachers that were telling them that um, your dead loved ones are dead and gone, you'll never see them again, and the rapture has already taken place, the Lord has already come, which was a lie. It was a false prophecy. So Paul straightens this out. And he says in verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means, and this is important, for that the day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, that's part two, the son of perdition. And what does it look like? He said when that's taking place, first there's going to be this falling away, and I believe we're seeing some of that even right now. And then after that takes place, in the prophetic sequence and order, the man of sin, or the Bible says in verse 4, the one who is opposing and exalting himself above all that is called God. So the spirit of Antichrist precedes the man of Antichrist, and when people are already exalting themselves above the knowledge of God, they don't even want God in their thinking, then my friends, we're seeing the entrance of the spirit and the man of sin, the Antichrist. Now in verse 7, the Bible says, and the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Who is that? That's none other than the church. When the church is raptured off of the earth, that gathering together, then the man of sin will be revealed. The only restraining power that is in this earth is the Holy Spirit through believers called the church. When the church disappears off of this earth and millions go missing, it will be the answer for some that... We've got everything under control. Now we can get our food resources and other resources that are going to be readily available and there'll be more for us. But the fact is, Jesus will have come. Now, why is this so important? Because we're seeing in the spirit of Antichrist that is encroaching upon us today uh, in the minds of people where uh, even in this crisis, even in this virus and plague and stay home order, we're seeing a mindset that is drifting away from God, that is departing from the faith, that some are doing whatever they want to do. And the real test of faith is upon us right now. The Bible tells us very clearly from the book of Revelation that when men, this is a, this is a, a prophecy into the future during the time of the tribulation period, 
when the plagues will be coming upon this earth. And it says in chapter 16, verse 9, listen to this, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. Two things I want to point out right here. First of all, God had power over the plagues. Second of all, in the middle of all of that chaos, crisis, all of that that is going to come during the tribulation period, men's hearts were not humbled. They did not repent. Now, in Revelation 18 and verse number 4, there is a prophetic word for us today to heed. Though this comes during the time of the tribulation, I believe it's a word for us now. And it says, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, lest you receive her plagues. Now, it's important to understand that the Bible teaches us that God actually uses pestilence and plagues to judge the world and the nations. He also uses them to warn and to shake his people, to wake them up, to help them to understand that it's time to draw our attention and draw near to God in this very critical hour. Certainly, the loving kindness of God is reaching out in our time, and he's gracious to forgive us and to wash away our sins. But it's more than just getting our sins forgiven, ladies and gentlemen. It's important in this hour that our faith doesn't fail in a time when everyone is looking for answers. This is a time to draw near to God, nearer than when we first believe, the Bible says. And you've heard me quote 2 Chronicles 7, verses 13 and 14, that when pestilence and plagues come upon this earth, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear you from heaven. I will forgive your sins and I will heal your land. This is a promise from God. In the middle of this virus that is causing people to stay home, I want to make it abundantly clear. No, Mr. Cuomo, what you need to know, sir, is, is that without God's help, it would be far worse, and he is, staying the hand of this virus. Many have already said that the curve has happened or that it's flattened out. Whatever that it is, to not acknowledge God is to our own peril. How important that it is that we seek God today and acknowledge him in all of our ways. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all of thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. I want to close today's Prophecy Files with bringing you an excerpt from the last Prophecy File message from last year that I preached from the pulpit of Pace Assembly. In this message, it really is challenging the hearts of people to humble ourselves before God and seek His face and not be hard-hearted in the time that we're in. Because in the book of Romans, hearts are given over by God to their own uh, demise. This is important for us to understand in this time when delusion is coming from every angle and we see the political darkness that is rising in, the, in this time that we're in right now, that spirit of Antichrist. How important that it is that our priorities are in line and not just going to church, but to be the church. And when and should the doors of the church be able to be opened in the days that are ahead, and I expect it to not neglect the gathering together of the people of God. Don't let it be secondary. Don't let God be underneath the entertainment or the sports or whatever it may be. This is a waking and a shaking that needs to take place. I would encourage you to get this or go back and watch it on archives because we speak about the lawlessness and the coming spirit of Antichrist and how important that it is that we are to walk close to God in this hour. I want to take you into the last portion of it, and I pray that it will be a challenge to your heart to serve the Lord in these last days, looking for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I remind you, let's look for a spiritual awakening in this hour, and also be reminded that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Isaiah describes two churches. He said one of them is going to say, we just want your name, Jesus, and we don't want anything else. Thinking like this is some kind of a la carte gospel. He said, there's a second one. 
That second one is going to see my glory. You read on down there. I don't have time to preach it. That second one is going to be a remnant church. That second one means this. He says, he says, when he says, he says, this is going to be a church full of my glory. Do you know what this word glory means right here? It means to lay hold of on by hand. God said in the last days there's going to be a church that's going to be a reprobate church and then I'm going to have a remnant church over here that's going to lay hold of my glory and they're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles. And ladies and gentlemen, I not just predict it, but I prophesy it happening right here in this house. Oh God, show us your glory. We need a great awakening. Prior to the Civil War, Prior to the Civil War, the Second Great Awakening took place. They had massive revivals in Kentucky where thousands and tens of thousands were getting healed and saved and delivered. A circuit riding preacher by the name of Peter Cartwright rode around and preached the gospel from his horse. Most of you may not know, if you go out in that Heritage Hall, the very first man that is, is an oil painting out there, Brother McGraw, literally walked from Alabama down to pastor this church in its early days to tell people about Jesus Christ in this community and that's the reason why Pace Assembly is sitting here today. Y'all didn't hear what I said. I said he walked, he didn't have a horse, he didn't have a cart, he walked down here with a Bible in a hand and some cheese in a bag and walked down here and said, thus saith the Lord. God give us preachers of the gospel today who are not looking for the paycheck but they're looking for the souls of men, women, boys and girls. And then rose up what a dichotomy. Then rose up a man by the name of Charles Finney who stood in Rochester, New York. Imagine that, Rochester, New York. And preached for six months the gospel of Jesus Christ and tens of thousands of people got saved. Preached for hours. It turned this entire country around in the Second Great Awakening. Sunday school in the Second Great Awakening. That's where it started. Evangelistical outreaches and missionaries distributing Bible, it happened in the Second Great Awakening. Are we going to have another Great Awakening? Oh, Pastor, I sure hope so. Well, it'll only happen if my people who are called by my name will hum themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I'll preach for another hour. But I'm going to end right here because this one took me to the moon whenever I pulled this article up and started reading on it. Now, I'm gonna get myself in a position to shout. Because I was reading this past week. This is what they said. The climate control folks got together and said, 11,000 scientists got together and said the only way to fight climate change is to reduce, gradually reduce the population of the earth. They said, we got too many people eating the food, too many people driving the cars, too many people driving SUV, too many people driving buses out there, burning up everything, putting emissions in the air. I read that and it didn't take me long for me to find out exactly what they're saying. They don't know they're saying it, but because I know the Bible, I said, because I know the Bible, are you sleeping on me? Because I know the Bible, and because these 11,000 scientists think that they got the grand solution, I came to tell you before they ever thought of it, God already had a plan. It's called the rapture of the church. And it ain't going to be gradual. It's going to be all of a sudden. And the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout. Get on your feet if you're going up in the rapture. It's God's solution to climate control.